Well, hey everyone, in this video, I wanna talk about Logic's drummer feature and we'll use it to create a drum track for a song. All right, I have a blank slate open. It's one of our LCBC templates uh, called the Reference Track Controller and Click Track Template. If you want this, check out the description below. There's a download link for that. Uh, or you can just use Logic's empty project or a song that you're currently working on. So first thing I'm gonna do is create a drummer plugin or our drummer thing. What is drummer? Well, we're about to find out. So let's go up to plus and we'll choose drummer and we're gonna select open library. And over here we have different genres so I can choose a genre if I want. I'm just gonna say rock for now and choose create. First thing I'm gonna do is just close the track inspector for now by pressing I. We'll get to that in a little bit. So we can see that a new track of some kind has been created and on that track we see a region here. So I'm just gonna zoom in on that a bit. And you can see that it looks like an audio region, but it's actually a MIDI region. So this is actually a special view of what I'm gonna call a uniquely programmable MIDI region. And it's actually the essence of the drummer feature in Logic. So if I press play, I'll hear a drum groove and a drum sound. Let's cycle loop this region. So I wanna show you something really quick. Instead of taking the time to do this manually, which I could, I could just drag this here with my mouse pointer. What I can do is I can select the region and there's a key command that will add cycle loop to the start and end points of the region or region selected and that's command U. So this is pretty self-explanatory in many ways. Each drummer in the top part of the library over here on the left uh, is in a different music style or genre of playing. They're in folders here. And they each have a different drum kit sound assigned to him or her that best suits the style. So I'm gonna play this back and start changing the different drummers. And again, the essence of Logic's drummer or the most significant thing that happens when I change the drummer is that the MIDI notes change in this drummer region. And primarily that's the MIDI pitches assigned to the different drum sounds. The rhythms will change as will the intricate timings and velocities or volumes of those drum hits or mini notes. So let's listen through some of these different drummers and different styles. Well, let's go back to the Kyle drummer, which if you're doing a demo for a worship song or any pop rock song, the Kyle drummer works well for this. So down below here are the controls for this region. And if you're not seeing this, just double click on the drummer region. And of course, if this was a normal MIDI region, you'd see a piano roll here. Over here on the left are the different groove presets of the selected drummer. So let's play this back and listen to a few of those. The rest of these controls is where it really starts getting cool in what I'd call the artificial intelligent area of the drummer feature, where you can really start to shape and change the MIDI information in the drummer region. So let's go back to the default half pipe preset. And by clicking and dragging this ball to different spots of the XY area here, or graph, I can affect the density or how complex the groove is by moving the ball left to right or the X part of the graph. And the volume or intensity of the drummer is determined by the up, down, or Y range of the graph. So let's check it out.
So as I move the ball around, some of the drum sounds may change as well. You probably heard when I had the ball down here in the softer area, the snare sound changed to a rim click. And over here in the right, I can change the hi-hat pattern and I can change the kick and snare pattern. So for the half pipe preset, the kick and snare pattern is on five. Let's move it to eight. You can see that gives it a double time feel where the snare is happening on the upbeats or the ands. And let's uh, take a listen to hi-hat pattern number four, and this is going to give us a 16th note feel um, on the hi-hat. Another thing you can do with the drummer plugin is have the drummer play toms. So a lot of times, instead of the right hand on the hi-hat, the drummer will move the right hand over to the toms. So to do that, you can see here that the hi-hat is selected. I'm just going to select the toms, and now you can see that the toms are selected and the slider has changed to toms. And also, instead of the right hand playing the hi-hat, the drummer here is going to switch to the, the crash cymbals or the ride cymbal or the ride bell. So let's select the cymbals here and listen to some of these patterns. I also have a fill knob here, and as I move it more to the right, it's going to add more fills, it's going to change the fill, and Logic will do it in a musical way, usually adding the fill here at the fourth bar, going into the fifth bar, or at the end of this region, the seventh and eighth bar. So let's listen to some of those. I also have a swing knob here, which is a lot like a quantized parameter you might see. And right now the swing is on 50% uh, or no swing at all. That's kind of how it works. And it's on eighth note. So a couple ways I could use this. One would be to create a blue shuffle out of this straight eighth note feel. So to do that, I'm just going to take the swing up to around 66 or play around this area to create that feel. Another way I might use swing in a musical way is on 16th notes. If they're ever feeling a little bit too mechanical, I'm going to turn this to 16th note. Let's move our hi-hat to the full 16th note hi-hat feel and just gradually move the swing up a few percentage points just to add a little bit of feel to it. I can also add some percussion to my drum groove. So let's just add claps here. It's going to add it to beats two and four. Okay, so what's the best way to use drummer to create a drum track of a song? So for me as a drummer myself, I tend to think that there are around two to three different drum grooves per song in the worship or pop rock genres. And I think in terms of verse, chorus, and bridge. So let's create three different drummer regions and adjust the controls individually for each region and make their grooves similar to what I want for each different section of my song. So to create the regions, all I'm going to do is uh, select my region and then press plus here after the region and it's going to duplicate that region. I've taken some time here to adjust each one of the regions drummer controls. So this first region would maybe be my verse feel with a 16th note pattern closed hi-hat to make it kind of tight and, and closed. And then going into the course, I took the Ocean Boulevard preset and adjusted some of the settings for that and added the crash symbol to just make it more open sounding and a bit more driving. <laughs> 
And this last one, I used toms here to make it more of a tom groove that would maybe build over time in, a, in the bridge. So I renamed these regions, and you can do that by clicking on the region and, and pressing Shift N, or I usually do it by just going to the inspector and typing it in here uh, in the region parameters. So you might have a scratch vocal or acoustic guitar track, a rhythm instrument track that gives you a guide to follow for the form of the song. And I added some dummy markers here to show you what could be a song arrangement. So what I might do from here is start placing my drummer regions, copying and pasting, and then splitting them to fit into your song arrangement. So it just turns out that my eight bar drummer regions that I started off with here uh, neatly fit into eight bar song sections of my faux song. Um, and I'm sure it's not going to be that easy for songs that we're writing because they, the sections are of all different lengths. But uh, just to show you that you can edit these uh, regions and you can cut them, you can split them, you can shorten them to be whatever length you like. So let's take a look here at the verse really quick. I want to show you something with that. I'm going to double click on it to open up the drummer controls. And when I was coming up with the verse groove and I was messing around with the drummer controls, I realized that I was not liking any of the fills that the drummer algorithm was coming up with. And you can see that the fill knob is all the way to the left. But I do want to fill going into course one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the region here at bar 44 with my mirror key tool. Just double click down there. Oops, I missed it. I was a little too far to the right. Let's undo. Let's try again. Okay, there it got it. Now this region here has independent drummer controls from this region. Even though they look the same now, I can edit them differently. So I'm going to take this last uh, measure going into the course and I'm going to add a fill. Let's just try this and see what this came up with. So now I can um, move this knob and try to get the fill that I would like. I kind of like that. That was working pretty good. Let's see what this one does. So that's going to give you some flexibility in your editing. And the nice thing is, let's say I wanted to edit this one further and I can move these controls around and maybe you get down a rabbit trail and you're like, oops, I want to get back to where I started. I can always go back to my original verse here uh, because a, this uh, region has independent controls from this region here. So with that idea of retaining your original edits that you make to a drummer region, I can save this as a beat preset. So I'm just going to make sure I have the verse region selected. Go into the beat preset menu. I'm going to go to the drop down and choose save preset. Then I can give it a unique name. Let's call that 16th or hi-hat 16th note. And now if I'm in a different Logic project and I'm using the Kyle Pop Rock Drummer, I have access to this beat preset. So that's a big chunk of what you can do with the drummer feature. And the strength of the drummer feature lies in giving you drum groove and fill options that you might not have come up with on your own. And programming drum parts on the piano roll note by note to emulate human drummers, it can be difficult and time consuming. And when Logic created the drummer feature, they brought in great live and studio drummers, they recorded their playing, and then they reverse engineered their drumming into MIDI data. So this programming work is already done for you in many ways. But as you're using this, you'll probably want to have a bit more control over the parts to create like an exact kick drum or snare pattern, or maybe there's one or two notes you're hearing in these that you want to get rid of, or you want to add something as you're working with these drummer regions. So now I can keep them in this state for the rest of the project and bounce them down like this. It'll work fine. But let's now convert the drummer regions to normal MIDI regions so that I can edit them exactly the way I want to. And this is the reason I haven't yet finished putting my drum parts in all my song sections yet. So to do this, I'm going to select my drummer regions and I'm going to control click in one of them and then go down to convert and choose convert to MIDI regions. 
So just know as I am further down the process of my song and I start editing these MIDI regions and I'm cutting them and changing MIDI notes inside them, uh, I cannot revert them back to drummer regions. So that's one of the reasons I retained my original drummer regions of my verse, chorus, and bridge. If I ever want to go back and continue to use the drummer controls and continue to experiment, I can do that. One of the ways I wanted to edit the bridge drum groove is to have the kick drums come in on the quarter notes and then have the bridge build a little bit. So let's double click on that to open the piano roll below. Or if I'm using one of the LCBC templates, uh, screen set five, so hit five on your computer keyboard, will open up a bigger view of the piano roll. And let's zoom in a little bit on this. I'm going to select C1 over here on the left, which is going to select all the kick drums. I'm going to delete those. And I'm going to bring this velocity slider up to around 120-some so that when I input the notes in, they'll be around that velocity. Right now, I have the pencil tool as my secondary tool, which is also called the command click tool. So I'm going to com press command to open up the pencil, go to the kick, and I'm going to pencil the notes in on quarter notes. Then I can repeat this by, I can select these, Command C to copy, then go to the next measure, Command V to paste, and so on down the line. And one of the ways I can build this dynamically is to have the kick drum play by itself for the first four measures, and then the second four measures have the toms come in. So let me just select everything but the kick drum for the first four measures, and just delete. And now going to build a little bit dynamically during that section. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. In the next video, I want to talk about the drum kit sounds themselves, changing drum kits, changing drum sounds using the drum kit designer, and also talk a little bit about producer kits.